Hi everyone. Today we are going to cover Ode to Autumn by John Keats. Ode to Autumn is the last and most faultless of Keats odes. From the point of view of perfection, of workmanship, it claims the highest place. It is an unparalleled description of a richly beautiful autumn day and Keats imparts to the readers the sincerity of spirit given to him by this lovely aspect of nature. The poem was written in Winchester on September 19th, 1819 and published in the year 1820. The central theme of this ode is fulfillment or maturity. There is a sense of acceptance of the beauty offered without any probing of its meaning or agonizing over its transience. Each of the three stanzas concentrates on a dominant, even archetypal aspect of autumn, but while doing so, admits and absorbs its opposite. The theme of the first stanza is ripeness of growth. In this stanza, autumn is like a beneficent deity, providing the earth with fruits. In stanza two, it becomes the human beings who work at gathering in the harvest. It is both a human reaper and autumn personified who sleeps on the furrow. The personification goes on to the third stanza, where Keats tells autumn to think not of the songs of spring, for thou hast thy music too. But the personification fade out with the dying season. The last stanza inevitably contains a touch of nostalgia with the dying of the day and dying of the season. And Keats, as, if it, as it were, comforts autumn for its lack of spring music, the music of growth. Thus, the close of the ode, though solemn, breathes the spirit of hope. In September 1819, Keats wrote to John Hamilton Reynolds from Winchester, How beautiful the season is now! How fine the air! A temperate sharpness about it, really, without joking, chaste weather, dying skies. I never really liked stubble, feel so much as now. I better than the chilly green of the spring. Somehow, a stubble feel looks warm, in the same way that some pictures look warm. This struck me so much in my Sunday's walk that I composed upon it. Let's start reading. Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. Close bosom friend of the maturing sun. Conspiring with him how to load and bless. With fruit, the vines that round the thatch ease run. To bend with apples, the most cottage trees. And fill all fruit with ripeness to the core. To swell the god and plumb the hazel shells with a sweet kernel to set budding more and still more. Later, flowers for the bees until they think warm days will never cease for summer has overbrimmed their clammy cells. In the first stanza, the poet says, autumn is the season of bounty. It is the season of mists and ripening of fruits. It cooperates with the sun in bringing about maturity of fruits. The vines, running round the edges of branches of the apple trees, are bent nearly to the ground with their weight of apples. These apple trees in the cottage garden are covered with moss and the fruits have ripened to the core. The fruits are full of sweet gourd. The hazelnuts are filled with sweet kernel. Flowers bloom more in this season. The bees taste the sweetness of these flowers. The bees appear to feel that the warmth of summer will never cease. For the sticky cells of the honeycomb are filled to overflowing with honey. Who hath not seen thee oft amid thy store? Sometimes, whoever seeks abroad may find the sitting careless on a greenery floor, thy hair soft lifted by the winnowing wind, or on a half reaped furrow sound asleep, drowsed with the fume of poppies, while thy hook spares the neck swath and all its twined flowers. And sometimes, like a gleaner, thou dost keep steady thy laden head 
across a brook or by a cider press with patient look thou watchest the last oozings hours by hours in the second stanza autumn is seen in various forms on the fields autumn is personified as a winnower a gleaner and a cider presser first autumn is personified as a winnower sitting near her store with her hair flowing in the wind secondly we can see autumn in the form of a reaper resting near a half reaped furrow while the corn remains unreaped perhaps she has fallen asleep due to its sleep inducing effects of poppies thirdly the autumn has been represented as a gleaner going home with fruits of the days gathering on her head and crossing a stream steadily without losing her balance and lastly she is seen at the side of press she is crushing the apples in the press and watching patiently the oozing out of the juice r by r where are the songs of spring i where are they think not of them thou hast thy music too while bad clouds bloom the soft dying day and touch the stubble plains with rosy hue then in a wailful choir the small gnats mourn among the river sallows born a loft or sinking as the light wind lives or dies and full grown lambs loud bleat from hilly bourn hedge crickets sing and now with treble soft the red breast whistles from a garden croft and gathering swallows twitter in the skies in the third stanza keats first feels the absence of the songs of spring but soon his regret is over for autumn has her own music or oh, autumn has its own peculiar music and beauty when the sun is setting a soft glow irradiates the field from which the crop has been reaped leaving the stumps behind the long drawn out clouds in the sky look like the bars of a grate at this time the gloomy sounds of gnats create their own music while they fly about among the shrubs by the river side or when they fly with the winds upwards in addition to these sounds there are also the bleatings of full grown lambs heard from the hills then there is the chirping of the grasshoppers the bold twittering of the swallows which are gathering together in large numbers for winter migration ode to autumn is a purely objective poem describing vividly the warmth and richness of the autumn season this ode is clear simple and transparent the poet takes delight in the autumn season as it is without wishing it to be anything else the main theme is ripeness of all the poet says that in season of autumn everything comes to maturity the poet sees a continuity in the life of nature and rejoices at the sober and subdued beauty of autumn that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed the explanation if you have any questions or you want me to cover any topic do let me know in the comment section if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe thank you so much for watching